Okay, welcome back everyone. Let's get right into the stock market technical analysis. Going to show you guys what's going on or at least what I see in the charts as of this morning. Uh, some pretty crazy price action obviously this morning with a huge reversal. And I want to point out, you know, what's going on, what I see after that price action. And uh, we'll look at some individual trade ideas. I've got a couple, you know, I've got a new one and yeah, we'll look at those. So um, as I get into it, guys, if you're interested in learning this as a skill set, check out my stock market technical analysis course. That's going to give you the ability to read the charts. Now, what you know, nobody knows where the market's going to go. OK, so at the end of the day, we use the charts to be our guide. But we do have to be able to, you know, anticipate, you know, we do have to be able to follow the price action, be able to make decisions quickly sometimes. Uh, you know, and it really depends on what you see in the charts. So at the end of the day, if you know what you're looking for in the charts and you know key levels, you know to, you know how to spot reversals, you can pivot. You can make changes to your to your positioning based on that price action. Because the thing is, is that when you're in a trade, there's always at some point in time where that trade is either going to you know reverse or not do what's expected. So I think it's important to understand. Uh, the technicals there and I teach that in my course link in the description below that's affordable and then also the private member group I was in there this morning giving you guys kind of key levels what I thought was going to happen you know areas to watch and uh, that's it you know at the end of the day I don't know what's going to happen nobody does but we can we can you know we can watch our key levels and you know use the clues that the market gives us especially in the charts to tell us where uh, where things are likely going to head in the future. So as of right now, um, let's check out the triple Qs. And it's about 10 in the morning Pacific time right now. So the, the market's been open for a few hours. Okay, um, triple Qs, we had, uh, we gapped down obviously in uh, when the CPI came out. And the thing is, is that the buyers basically just stepped right in and we just rallied it right up. So now that we've, you know, have that rally, what does that mean for us? Well, on the hourly chart here on Triple Qs, we still have the bullish divergence. So the low that we made was a divergent low again, all right? So that's one thing to note. The divergence is still there and it hasn't been negated. So, you know, that tells me certain things about what the market might want to do in the near term future. Okay, we rallied. The other thing we've been watching is obviously this bearish rising wedge we broke to the or sorry bullish falling wedge wedge i apologize bullish falling wedge we broke to the upside we back tested pretty much back tested all week waiting for that cpi reading today to come out and uh we got it and you know the price action's been bullish so tells me that we're probably going to continue a rally here all right now no guarantees of course the levels to watch or at least the key levels that i see obviously are the wedge, the down, you know, the support line, and then resistance is right there about 267.54. You can see all the tags right there, and then we hit it, you know, and right there, that's resistance. We break above that, we're probably gonna continue to rally. Uh, the levels, the next levels to watch above that, we've got 276, 279, you know, and change basically. And then up here at 291, which I think we could get to 291 if we're going to, you know, if we're going to start a sustained rally. For me, what I'd be looking for is probably that breakout above this 267.50. We start to get an hourly close above there. Uh, with the bullish divergences intact, and they are there intact now, then it probably means we're going to continue some sort of a bear market rally. Now, at the end of the day, in my, you know, it is a bear market rally. I do think we're still going to hit those lower targets. Um, and going back to the daily, those targets are down, right? You know, just sitting right down there. I do think we're going to hit them. So do we, you know, the point being is, is this, is this rally just going to be a one day thing and then they're going to sell it down tomorrow? That's completely possible. So, you know, especially in a bear market, you'll have these kind of counter trend rallies and then the very next day they just sell it right down. And uh, yeah, that's completely possible. So, you know, at the end of the day, we're just going to have to use our key levels to take the positions and, you know, position around those levels. Right now, resistance is about 267.50. Uh, another thing to point out on the daily chart, we have the potential for a bullish engulfing candle. So 
this candle right here is engulfing pretty much the last two days of uh, price action. And you, what you want to see is, you know, you want to see, you want to see we the close, you know, clearly engulfing the bodies of these previous candles. So there's your bodies right there. And right now it is a bullish engulfing as long as they don't sell it down and it closes lower and we, you know, even close higher, you're gonna have that bullish engulfing. That's a potential reversal candlestick and you look for confirmation or additional buying, uh, you know, in, in the following day or, or following days. So there is a potential reversal candlestick right now. We'll see how the day closes. Uh, but again, yeah, we could rally. And if we do, we're probably going up to that 291.63 as the next level of kind of where we would likely pivot or, or sell down, potentially even to go hit the trend line right here. This is your bear market trend line in Triple Qs. You can see I've got it marked out. There's, a, there's the last tag of it. We could rally, obviously, all the way up to that trend line, hit that as resistance. So... Plenty of things are possible right now. 267.50 break above that would trigger, uh, you know, that we're likely going to continue to rally uh, in my book. The S&P 500 again bullish engulfing candle today, uh, and right there at resistance 362.50. Okay, so we need to see a breakout above those to trigger, you know, that the fact that we're probably going to have a continuation rally. Uh, and again, you know, that just goes to show what one, one thing, what, you know, sometimes you'll see a read or a look at the market, they'll give you a look and then they'll reverse it and go the other way. And that's just the nature of the market. You have to be, you know, you have to be willing to change your thought on where you thought something was going to go and, you know, reverse, reverse your uh, position. So um, that is all I have there on the SPY. You know, the only thing is we've got bullish or we've got bullish divergence here on the RSI and the PPO on the hourly chart. So yeah, and it, we have the makings of a reversal candlestick. So in general, it looks like we've started a rally. We'll see how we close. But if we close with the same kind of look that I'm seeing right now, then it tells me we're probably starting a rally. All right, let's look at the dollar here. So this will be key to see if the rally is going to continue. This is the dollar futures. Now on the dollar futures, um, bigger picture on the daily chart, we've got negative divergence. All right, so that tells me that we should sell down soon. We don't have to yet, but we should soon uh, because that divergence is there. It could continue to build and ultimately could get negated, but it's there now. And then on the hourly chart, when I zoom in, we had this recent this recent uh, bearish rising wedge pattern. We broke down and we've just been kind of going sideways, waiting for the CPI to come out. That's basically what has been going on. And here we are now. You can see we basically sold down. Here's the previous low that we've made. It's about 112.28 and we're just kind of trading there right now. So I need to see where this goes. Uh, if this breaks down and, you know, continues lower, that's going to be bullish for gold, gold mining stocks, commodities, as well as the stock market. The stock market should rally uh, on a falling dollar as well. So that's just kind of what I'm looking at right now, waiting to see what we got going on. The other thing is, see the negative divergence that's just been in play? Even this little high where they popped it right here, okay, just this morning, they popped it, made a, a slightly new high on the hourly chart. That was a divergent high. See the momentum dropping? So they that divergent high was pretty much instantly faded. If I had to guess, you know, right now we are at that kind of, this kind of key level, but I would guess that we are going to continue lower. One, one reason being is that we have the negative divergence on the daily and the hourly. We have a bearish rising wedge pattern. Uh, you know, just everything's set up for the dollar to fall. And I talked about this the other day, how the market was definitely set up to rally. The dollar was set up to fall and gold mining stocks, gold stocks, gold in general was set up to rally. Uh, it looks like that could be playing out. So it's still a little early, but you know, I'm just seeing more signs of it. And especially with the price action today. Here's gold. All right, so gold. Um, again, 1680 is kind of the key level. We're, we're still not, it's still not showing me signs that it wants to rally completely yet because obviously we haven't, you know, rallied too hard. Buyers were stepping in this morning and buying, but we got to see if there's any follow through to this initial move from this morning. So 
you know, if we can get back above the 1680, that's going to be bullish. And then ultimately the downtrend line, we need to see a break out of that. So this is coming off these highs here on the daily chart. All right, you got resistance. We got another tag of it there. <clears throat> you need to see a break out of that downtrend line to trigger kind of a longer term buy signal. But we get that breakout and gold's likely going to run. So we'll see how that plays out. Big bullish divergence on the daily. So you'll see right there, momentum's been building on gold. And when I go to the miners, GDX, bullish divergence has been building on this one for a while as well. So each new low that we've been making has been a divergent low. Uh, we might have started that uptrend, okay? We had this bullish falling wedge. We broke out, back tested once, kind of back tested twice. All right, and, and maybe we're starting an uptrend like that, all right? So. I'm bullish. I'm, you know, I, I, I've been bullish on the miners because of the divergences that have been building. They just haven't started to run yet. So with this price action today and the big reversals that we're seeing could be the start of the run. I know I've been talking about that for a while. Ultimately, these miners, they've been chopping around. They haven't been moving down too much and they haven't really been moving up. So, I mean, bigger picture. Yeah, on a day to day basis, they're, they're swinging up and down. But if you look at the bigger picture, they're really just kind of going sideways for the last little while. So that's what I got on that. I'm looking at these miners like Newmont. Okay, so Newmont had this downtrend line right here to watch on the daily chart. And we did get a breakout, all right? And if you wanna look at this just objectively, we had a breakout and came in for a back test today, all right? So that drop when it opened was a full back test of the trend line. So if this wants to run, technically it could. It's set up for it for sure. Big bullish divergence on the daily RSI and PPO with that back test at support. Again, if this wants to run, it's it, the chart the chart set up for it to run. All right. So that is it on that one. Commodities. So again, if the dollar is going to fall, then ag commodities commodities should rally in general. This is Nib, which is cocoa. It's a cocoa ETF. Um, but here's what I got on it. So you've got a downtrend line here on Nib. All right, you have a breakout of the downtrend line and a back test yesterday at back test and today pretty impulsive uh, move off of that back test up 3%. All right, you have bullish divergence on the daily chart. Again, this one's set up to run if it, if it you know if it's going to run. It's this is a you know this is as good as it gets when it when it when you look for a bullish setup. All right, so. It's, uh, it's not, you know, obviously the best entry would have been right down here at this back test, uh, but there it is. And it's, you know, it hasn't really started to run yet. So if it's going to, I suspect we can get up to the 200 day at a minimum. And also this trend line I've noticed, this is coming off kind of the lows here back in 2017. Uh, a, a, you know, a run up and a back test of that trend line, I think would, would make sense. From where we're at now, that's a move of about, Oh, we'll call it 10% roughly. The 200's right there, but that's a, a move of about 10% um, to those to that resistance line. So keep an eye on that. It looks bullish to me. XOM. All right. So I don't. I'm not in love with this one anymore, especially with the dollar looking like it's about to continue lower. Uh, I covered just you know full disclosure. I covered pretty much most of my shorts on the price action this morning. Uh, did grab kind of a quick little momentum field long on Tesla. Uh, I'm not in that one right now. I'm actually not long anything in that I was just short. Uh, just want to give it a little while to see what happens. You know, I don't want to just flip on a dime right right here. Uh, but I did catch a little bit of a long this morning on Tesla to uh, to grab some gains there. Um, and. I'm more interested right now in the gold miners, all right? Gold miners and commodities. So, you know, I, I think that's an easier trade if the dollar is gonna drop, then those should rally. They've been beaten up pretty good, so they should have a pretty pretty strong rally if we're gonna get that. So that's kind of my best of breed in terms of the long trade. Again, you know, I pointed out what you'd wanna look for in the queues, and obviously there could be, uh, could be rallies there, but, um, we need to see some confirmation that I think is uh, the key. Uh, Tesla, so Tesla, I pointed out in the private member group this morning that Tesla was basically gapping right at, gapping down right at support at about 207. So that trend line comes from, you can see we had some reactions right back in here and then a little bit right through here, several reactions right through there. So 
Um, that looked like support to me, and that's what I told him. I said, look, we're gapping down, but we are gapping to right, right to support. So if we break that support, okay, we could go lower. And I thought we would because it looked like the market was going to sell down, but um, we didn't, you know, and Tesla held that support. Now, if I go to the hourly chart, you'll see here that we this recent downtrend line that Tesla's been in, we're, we're starting to break out to the upside on that one. So, and you do have bullish divergence on the hourly. So looks like Tesla could rally here. As long as we don't see selling come in this afternoon before the market closes and, you know, then I think you're probably going to get that rally. So that's really all I have for today. A couple new trade ideas. Went through, uh, reviewed some of these other ones. Oh, I do want to cover the first solar, FSLR. Okay, I am still short this one. So here's what I got on it and the reason why I'm still short. On the daily chart, the key level that we were watching was this 10 or 127.30. All right, we held that for a while up here. Today we gapped down and so far we're still below there. So where do we close? That's going to be, you know, the key. So, I mean, are they able to recover that today? And if they are, then, okay, I probably don't want to be short that. But if they're not able to recover it, then I see this as a breakdown and going to the hourly chart, uh, a breakdown and a back test, and then they're gonna, you know, and it should reject, all right, it should head lower. So as long as we stay below there, I, I, I'm comfortable being short. If they can recover that 127 area, then, it, you know, maybe not so much, uh, but that's kind of what I got on that. So I'm still short on that one. Looking at the daily, we have the negative divergences in, in place. So this is kind of different than what the triple Qs looks like. The triple Qs had bullish divergence. This has this has negative divergence. All right. So this tells me that even if triple Qs rallies, this one is going to sell down. And I don't know why that is, but it just that's what the chart says. And you can see this thing has been kind of trading opposite of the triple Qs. It's been rallying pretty strong. While if I go over to the triple Qs, that that's been selling down. So I guess it just trades opposite, you know, and that's just how it, how it is. So still short FSLR. I still like that. You know the levels I'm looking for. So um, that is all I have, guys. Drop me a thumbs up if you're finding some value out of the content. S you know, sign up for the course if you haven't taken that. There's a lot of value there. Uh, join the private member group. Hopefully I'm able to help you guys out there. And I will catch you on the next one. Bye.